expects that you are going to fold. That you're going to sit down and be quiet. And it's all over the country every day. I've got a gentleman from Boston that owns a cleaning company that's been emailing me lately. He's going through the same thing I went through. Nice pipes. He sent me an email recently. He says, you know, I just wish this would go away so I could get back to running my business. It would be like a vacation. He hasn't given in yet, but he's close. They want us to give in, and we can't give in. In fact, we have to stand up like little Ralphie did in the movie Christmas Story, out on the playground in the snow, look the bully in the eye and punch him in the nose. I told you about what's going on behind the scenes. Let me tell you a couple things. We're all watching the Boeing situation down in South Carolina. Let me tell you, I think that's a smokescreen. They want you to be watching it. Have you ever noticed with this White House, however you have events going on, that kind of takes away from some of the other things going on behind the scene that's a real problem? The unions and the group that identify with them are masters of sleight of hand. You need to understand that. Boeing will get resolved. But you know, while all that's going on, they've overturned three regulations in the National Labor Relations Board that are detrimental to business. Three decisions, excuse me. They've implemented two new regulations, and they've got four or five more on the docket, that if they get them through, I'm here to tell you, if I was confronted with the same corporate campaign today, I don't know if I'd win. And it's not because I don't have the guts to do it. Washington wouldn't let me win. Speaking of Washington, I'm going to tell you how I won, then I'm going to shut up. We had had enough of the SEIU beating on us. And in November of 2007, we filed 33 unfair labor practices against the SEIU in one day. Nobody had ever done that to them before. They were taken back. A lot of them revolved around two decisions that we won. One was illegal picketing past a 30-day period. They can pick it legally, but after 30 days, they have to petition for election, which they would never do. The other was secondary, secondary boy, boycotting, excuse me, going into your customer and asking them to throw you out in favor of a union company. We won those two decisions. During that time period, they had got 10 of our people to go out on strike out of 800 in Indianapolis. Do the math, pretty small percentage. When they lost those two decisions, they had the people apply to come back to work, and I had to make the tough decision to say no. Not because I didn't feel for those people, but they were the people that were involved in the illegal picketing that the government found to be illegal. So I turned them down. The next day, the SEIU filed 10 unfair labor practices against us for each one of those employees. And our government upheld them, even though they had found the picketing to be illegal. My guess, Andy Stern, who was president of the SEIU at the time, and had been in the White House, I know at that time they had said around 22 times, made a call to his buddy, who in turn made a call to the National Labor Relations Board and said appeal him. We in turn appealed those decisions 
It took us a year to go to an appeals hearing, which we won. Yeah. In fact, the administrative law judge said that the testimony was unbelievable and contrived, and this was a law judge that had never found in a business's favor before. It doesn't stop. Within two days, the federal government appealed the decision. It took us another year of fighting until May of last year, they found in our favor 3-0, unanimous. This is what we're fighting. These are the connections we're fighting. We have to be strong. The other thing that has to happen is, if we don't get out and we don't get the vote out, they're going to. Because the union's going to get their foot soldiers out there. They're going to fill the coffers during this next election for this president. That's why the NLRB is trying to get all these regulations through real quick so they can force unionize people overnight, get their dues, and pour them into the campaign next year. I'm asking you, talk to your congressman. No, email them, call them, send them letters, do whatever you have to do to stop what's going on in Washington. And get out and get everybody you can and tell them they have to be out and voting on Election Day next year. Because if you don't, it may be the end of American exceptionalism as we know it. Thank you for your time. You know, the funny thing is that uh, a lot of Americans that could uh, read Dave's book, which is, by the way, available back there, a lot of people wouldn't believe it. They don't want to believe that they belong to a country where the government can actually do the things that that, happens, that, that happened today. And if you've ever been involved in uh, the bureaucracy, you can sometimes, not all the time, but especially at the state and federal level, uh, you get that, that, just that arrogance, the way they answer your questions when you're trying to find something, uh, some information that you're entitled to. So David, thank you very much. Uh, that was an excellent 